What's up, Data Pipeliners? Welcome back to another episode on Writing Data Pipelines with Kedro. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at how you can use SQL databases in your Kedro pipeline. Let's go ahead and get started. So in order to use a SQL database in our Kedro project, we have to use either the pandas sql table data set or the pandas sql query data set these are the two alternative data sets that we can use for our pipelines um, they both use underneath pandas to sql and pandas read sql um, functions from the data frame uh, in order to operate so we're just wrapping around this panda functionality uh, and that panda functionality is actually based on sql alchemy uh, so the first thing that we need to do is in order to connect to a database, we have to create a connection string. This is going to be a SQL alchemy connection string. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to be using a Postgres database. So I have a Docker container that has a Postgres table uh, that we can use. So first, we are going to put our SQL connection string inside of our credentials.yaml. So right here, I'm just going to create a Postgres connection string and then I'm going to use con so con is the argument uh, that the pandas data frame is expecting uh, so we can just use con and then the connection string for this guy postgres sql which is going to be the uri and then the next postgres here is the username uh, the my secret password is obviously my secret password and then the local host is going to be the host of the database Finally, the 37774 is the port number. Actually, this should be 32774. And it's slash Postgres for the final database that we're going to be using. So that's the database uh, connection string. So now we have this in our credentials.yaml. And again, the credentials.yaml is where we're going to be putting our secret information to make sure that we do not check it into the repository. We do not want to be publishing these secret credentials to any repositories. Kedro uses the credentials.yaml to enforce that kind of standard of secrecy. Next, we're going to be adding the catalog entry. So to start, we're going to be using the SQL table data set. This takes an argument for table name, and I have a table that's already prepared called Iris, and then it takes the credentials. So it uses these credentials to read from this table. The credentials here are how we refer to our secret credentials. So we don't put our secret connection string into our catalog.yaml, which makes the catalog.yaml much, much more portable. We have the table name, of course, which is the table name that we want to use, and then our SQL table data set. What this is going to do is it's going to read from the table, the entire table, as a pandas data frame. So if we take a look at the Jupyter Notebook here, we can see what this table looks like as a pandas data frame and how it operates. So here I can actually just use, of course, catalog, since we're using a Kedro Jupyter Notebook, catalog, load, and then our data frame, which is going to be the iris table. And that's going to come back perfectly as a pandas data frame. And this is obviously the example iris data set that comes with Kedro. And that's it. Very simple to use Kedro to load from a SQL database. But what about if you want to save to a SQL database. Well, again, Kedro uses pandas.2 SQL uh, underneath the hood. And so this also uses, of course, our connection string, uh, but there's a, there's a few caveats that we have to keep in mind. So first off, let's see what that looks like when we write it in a pipeline. So I go to our main pipeline here. We're just going to remove the default pipeline, and we're going to create a new pipeline, which is just going to be a lambda xx. It's going to be an identity function. And it's going to read from the example iris data CSV and then write it out to the iris table. Now, what do you think is going to happen here? Well, when we do a Kedro run, we're actually going to run into an error. And that error is going to say that this table iris already exists. So it's trying to overwrite a table that already exists, and this can't happen. So there's a few things that we can do to address this problem. The first is we can actually make it such that when we save our table, if it exists, we use a replacing function. So this save args if exists parameter is available on the original pandas data frame to SQL function. So we're actually just passing this argument directly to the to SQL function. 
it has an if exists argument there, which can determine the behavior that pandas is going to adopt if the table exists already. It comes with a few options. It comes with replace, append, or fail. And this is what we actually have right here. By default, it will fail. But now that we're using replace, if we rerun this guy, it will in fact delete that table and then overwrite that table with the new data and see we have no failure here. And so you have to be careful if you have a lot of data, it could take a long time to drop the table and then re-upload all of that stuff. That's in those cases, you do want to use your append, but you have to be careful with append because of course you don't want to duplicate data. So this is where chrono coding comes in, or you could potentially do some tricky things where you have an ID and then you check in the original one with the ID. There's a lot of options that you can take, of course. And so that's it for the SQL table data set. So let's take a look at the SQL query data set. This one is actually quite cool because it allows you to create a query string for a table and then use that query string as your input data. And so here, this iris query catalog entry that we've just created is congruent to the iris table catalog entry. This is just going to select all from the iris table, which is exactly what we had before. However, if we do a little bit of trickery here, so for example, if we just take the max sepal width, then we're doing something a little bit unique. And if we open this up inside of our Kedro notebook, we can see that it does indeed find the max sepal width from the table itself. And this is really cool. But the problem with the SQL query data set is that you actually cannot save to this catalog entry. So keep that in mind. If you do try to save to that catalog entry, it's going to return an error which means that you cannot have it as the output for any of your pipeline nodes, but you can have it as an input. And so one way you can actually use this guy uh, is for example, if you have a large amount of data, you could in fact use the database itself to do the computation. And this is often much faster uh, depending on your database and your data itself. But you can see where you can use the SQL table data set to load data up into the database, and then you can use your query data set to read that data back. And you can make sure that that follows your DAG convention by transcoding the data. And we do have a video on transcoding if you want to check that out. But that's it for today's episode. Thank you very much for joining me. If you made it this far, make sure you button that like, sub that scribe, and ring that ding if you want to know when we are pipelining. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.